G'day folks, just got a quickie video for you all. Now, if anybody remembers watching the CPU upgrade video with the HP Pavilion 522C, you might remember that the CPU temperatures were not so good. And today I think I'm going to try and rectify that situation. Now, I don't know if this is gonna be the end all be all solution, ultimately, but you know, I'm gonna give at least some kind of a try. If anything, I'll put back in the old AMD CPU because I still have it, but from another computer I got recently, I got this solid copper heatsink. And of course the system this came from was also an AMD Athlon XP. So what better CPU upgrade to do than a heatsink that is truly copper. In the case of this system, it only has an aluminum heatsink with no heat pipe of any kind. Well, heat pipes rather. So, I mean, might as well. Might as well see if it does something at least because Otherwise, the system runs at like 60-something degrees idle, so that's not going to really last very long. So, I don't know. Let's get this heat sink off of here. I got my tools inside, and we'll see if this makes a difference. Okay, heat sink is off. Here you can see the contact it made. Now you can see why there'd be such a thermal issue with something like this, where it's an aluminum heat sink. It's running at 66 degrees. Well, it also could just be because I didn't use enough thermal paste the last time, which I don't know, maybe. But also, I got another thought in mind. Well, this CPU is an AMD Athlon XP, if I remember correctly, because it's been a while since I've watched the video. I want to say this was a 2400 plus that I used. Well, today, well, I've got the original 2000 plus CPU right here. Sorry about the bad lighting. But yeah, original 2000 plus. But I've also got another upgrade, a very minor one, of course. Came out of that other motherboard. It's a 2500 plus. So I'm gonna see if this is going to work any better. Since this is kind of like my primary Athlon XP machine, might as well, right? So I'm gonna take this out of the socket carefully, of course, because fragile, brittle plastic. There we go. And I just wanna compare them. Let's just see what the differences are, if I can grab the uh, CPU itself. Being gentle, of course. At least from first glance, no. It seems to be about the same, but uh, yeah. I don't know. Let's give a 2500 plus a try here. Of course, put the triangle up in the corner, just like that. And uh, obviously I'll clean off the old thermal paste, but then we'll put on the new thicker copper heatsink and see if it makes a difference. All right, I got the monitor in VGA mode. I got the heatsink connected to the socket. You can't really see it too well because of the bad lighting, but that's okay. Got the fan plugged in. So now it's just up to this little power supply to give this thing juice. All right, smoke test once again. All right, well, the CPU fan works. It is alive. I forget what the BIOS key is on this. Okay, good, I got it. Okay, CMOS is dead, big deal. Oh no, unknown CPU type at 1.1 gigahertz. Oh no, that's even better. Well, let's see what the temperatures are at. I want to let it stabilize it says 62 degrees that's certainly an improvement over the other heat sink where it was at like 67 degrees idle not great but you know i don't know what this thing's supposed to be running at but if anything copper will definitely do a better job of conducting the heat out to the cpu fan where i can blow it away versus the uh aluminum heat sink and i don't know not sure why it's running at 1.1 gigahertz. I guess we'll try to boot into Windows and see what happens here. <laughs> see if I have to go back to the original Athlon XP 2000 Plus to get rid of that unknown CPU type error. <laughs> Alrighty, and we are alive, at least somewhat. So I guess we'll just try launching uh, CPU-Z here. And uh, actually, first things first, let's go to the My Computer Properties. Oh, interesting. It shows 1.46 gigahertz here. What does CPU-Z detect it as? That's a good question. Because honestly, I have no idea. 
Okay, so it sees it as an Athlon XP on the Barton core, but it's showing up as a 1.463 gigahertz chip, which is interesting because, again, this is a uh, Athlon XP 2500 plus. Now, is that the rated clock speed for this chip? I don't know. I haven't even looked it up as of, you know, this clip. So I couldn't tell you what, um, <laughs> but at least it's showing up. But I may just have to go back to that original Athlon XP 2000 plus, especially considering, you know, we're having issues with trying to get other CPUs other than the original 2000 plus that this thing came with when it was new to work. And that's most likely down to the BIOS because this has its original BIOS on it from like 2002. So really it could just be a BIOS limitation, but I swear I think I've tried to look up BIOS updates for this motherboard and I haven't had any luck. So it might just be that we'll have to go back to the original uh, Athlon XP 2000 plus, which, oh well. But at the end of the day, at least it'll have a better heatsink because I've got that copper one and then that aluminum heatsink over there. It can just obviously either get rid of or, or you know, go to the recycling center or something. I don't know. Well, observing the thermal paste contact, it definitely got more on the CPU, which is good. And probably the heatsink had something to do with why the temperatures were slightly lower. But I think at the end of the day, um, since the system doesn't like having anything other than its original AMD Athlon XP 2000 Plus in it, I think let's go ahead put back in its original CPU here, which again, I still have, and just, you know, have the better heat sink for better thermal performance. I think that'd be the most logical avenue. Okay, heat sink is back on, although it does need a pretty good cleaning even still. And I got the other two CPUs out. So let's try it now. We'll see if it reports the proper processor now, and we'll see if the thermals are better, which, Crossing my fingers, they should, since it's a lowered AMD Athlon XP, but heaven forbid, it's probably still going to be running at like 60-something degrees. Okie doke, let's fire it up. Definitely the CPU fan is a lot less whiny, and it definitely spins faster, so I'll give it that. So I shouldn't have to worry about going into the BIOS, so it should just boot into Windows, and then I can go check CPU-Z from there see if it detects the proper processor once again. Okie doke, CMOS is reset once again. So that's good. That's exactly what I wanted. Okay, let's go into the start menu here and go under my computer properties. Hey, hey, it detects it once again as an AMD Athlon, sweet. And of course, Windows reports this clock speed a bit weird. It always has, the CPU is a 1.66 gigahertz if I'm not mistaken. And I believe the one that was original to this computer is based on the Thoroughbred Core, if I'm not mistaken. It might've been the other one I had in there. No, this one's Palomino. Okay, so the one that's in this computer is a Palomino, which probably explains why it actually works. I think the original upgrade I had, which was the 2400 plus, that was based on Thoroughbred. And then obviously the 2500 plus was on a different core altogether. So yeah, that makes sense. Wow, that's some ridiculous voltage. Holy crap. 1.728 volts, my goodness. No wonder these things ran hot. At least it detects the proper CPU once again, which is good, although it's probably gonna take a couple of reboots to get this thing to stop saying 1.22 gigahertz. So might have to take a trip into the BIOS for that. So let's do that now, woohoo. Well, that's a good sign. The BIOS actually detects it as an Athlon XP 2000 Plus at 1.66 gigahertz with a 266 megahertz bus and 256K of cache. I don't know why the video keeps getting set to PCI, but whatever. Oh yeah, those temperatures are way better for this processor. I knew that the 2000 Plus would obviously run a little bit better because there's uh, obviously a proper CPU profile in the BIOS for it. But man, that heatsink actually does quite a difference. Now, of course, it's still going to run toasty because that's what Athlon XPs do because of their high voltage. But as you can see, that's significantly better. And that should allow the CPU to stay cooler for longer, especially when it's under load. And especially under Windows when the CPU clock speed is allowed to dip because, of course, uh, that should actually help out quite a bit. So 
You know what? I think I'll actually just stick with this because it seems like thermals are way better, at least primarily, you know, here in the BIOS where it's just getting loaded down by just being on, you know, compared to 67 degrees beforehand with the aluminum heat sink, this copper one should be much, much better. So, okay, that's pretty much going to wrap up this little quickie because that's all there really is about it. So, yeah, thank you all for watching. I'll catch you all in the next one. Mm.